the story of a Jersey job of coffee with chopsticks using the vortex method, the only true way to optimize the taste of your coffee at the molecular level. Good morning. Welcome to the Daybreak Show. I am the Sultan. We'll get started, but first, percolator made coffee. I just ground it and made it in a percolator. Well, I just said that, didn't I? From Jersey Java. Thank you, Eric, for the gift. Let's try this for the first time. Nice, decent, thank you. Nice. Oh, that's good. Just a good, normal cup of coffee. I like that. Well, good morning, my friendly acquaintances. Good to see you today. I just got called an incel on one of my YouTube shorts. <clears throat> Must be somebody that doesn't know me. That's the one thing about YouTube shorts is that when I put those out, they go out to the general public that is a YouTube watcher, not specifically my audience. Who knows me? The general world doesn't know me. So the minute somebody sees chopsticks, the minute somebody sees the black hood over my head, the, the minute somebody hears me talking about certain things, they just think like, who's this incel? You gotta love that. You gotta love that. Today's audio is brought to you by the Bose earbuds. Bose earbuds. And they are in. The microphone is on, so we'll see how this goes. But I've been using these for a week now at the gym. In addition to, you know, headphones and such and like wired earbuds. And I'm loving them. Absolutely loving them. And I like how they fit in my ears as well. And that's, that's super important when you are trying earbuds how they stay in your ears is going to be like a deal breaker or deal maker. So that's something to think about. Well, I'm going to pick a random out of shape dude at my gym with the help of the manager. Someone like my age, ideally a guy divorced who's been through some discouragement, depression, uh, feels like his life is a little hopeless, might want to, you know, attempt to play with getting back into shape and such. And I'm going to find him, and I'm going to see if he wants to be a workout partner a couple days a week with hardcore accountability, let's say three times a week, and deadlines, and chart every calorie for like two months. And I'm just wondering if I'll find anybody. If I can't, I'm putting the word out there. Is there somebody in the Conshohocken area that you know? I don't want to work with someone who is already able. I want to work with someone who's been through some shit, who is discouraged. And it's my challenge to whoop you back in the shape, to help you out mentally, emotionally, and not looking to be a like a by-your-side therapist. That's not what I'm trying to do. What I am trying to do is be an encourager in real time, put my money where my mouth is, and work with somebody at getting back into shape and documenting how this can help you here and help you with your heart. And I'm not talking about your cardiac issues. I'm talking about with your trust issues, with, with women, with the world, with uh, work and such. So that's something that I want to do. So we'll see if I find somebody like that. Here's a guy. I am 67 years old and a U.S. Air Force retiree getting ready to retire from my second career in the casino industry. I was tragically widowed almost two years ago, married 47 years, but a man of faith. It's been rough. I miss the love of my wife, but moving ahead, I enjoy your podcast. Keep doing what you do. Thank you, sir. You are in good company here, and I think you will find everything you need or almost everything you need on this channel. To get you from A to B, to kind of get you moving a little bit. Man, that coffee is good. One of my inspirations, as you might know or not know, a successful family man, multi-billionaire, John Paul DeGioia. He was once homeless and living in his car with his child, broke, discouraged, etc. Now has one of the most successful companies in history, Paul Mitchell Systems. 
He is the single best motivational speaker I have ever heard in my life, and I listened to him again yesterday, the speech from Stanford. I posted it in the community section of the YouTube channel. The single best motivational speech I've ever heard in my life. So if you want to pick yourself up, maybe get some ideas, check out the speech. In the same way that Twitter is a shit show between liberals and conservatives, Gab, which I like, my other platform that I post on is Gab, is a shit show between the I'm um, more Christian than you types and then the Christians with, the, with their feet on the ground and their head on their shoulder living in the real world types year after year after year. I just see it all the time. Whereas like on Twitter, it's like usually liberals attacking conservatives, that kind of thing. On Gab, it's Christians attacking Christians. I'm sure that's one of the unintended consequences. This is why I said if anyone ever started like conservative land or libertarian land or like, like all your people, whoever your people are, all went to an island somewhere, like within one year, there would be five different types of those people. There would be cemeteries, there'd be robberies, there would be poor people, rich people. It's just human nature. It's human nature. There's no such thing as a utopia. No such thing as a utopia. You know, well, I'm starting a website that only has this. Good luck. Let me know how that works for you. I just love how he puts himself down. He said, no woman ever about her man. And those that do like it, like that man under their thumb. That ain't cool. Don't even get me going again on men who self-deprecate. You know, every Valentine's Day, every anniversary, I don't know how she puts up with me. She could do better than me, but she chose to stay with me. It's like, dude, really? My better half. Let me go check with the boss. Men love putting themselves down. Then there's always the few that say, well, it's all done in good fun. Really? Okay. <sighs> men can be their own worst enemies. Well, you don't have to be arrogant about it. I didn't say be arrogant about it. I didn't say that. How about this? We had the good sense to see the good in each other, create a life together. That way you're lifting both people up. If you have to put yourself down to lift your wife up, there's something wrong in your head. Bro, bra, bra. I don't listen to my own excuses and doubts, and I certainly won't listen to yours if you are coaching with me. I couldn't do it by myself. I had hard deadlines and accountability with my coach, which helped me get unstuck. Isn't it time you got unstuck? Where are you stuck in your life? Can you do it by yourself? Some can, most can't. That's why I do what I do. With a vision, goals, and a plan, you can count your chickens before they're hatched. Why else would a farmer plow a barren field? He can see the harvest in the fall even before he plants the seeds. Imagine if you're a fat dude, like a fat, out-of-shape dude. you got to picture yourself being a trim, muscular, in-shape dude. That's got to happen here first. Otherwise, you're just going to feel like you're a drone going to the gym. Get it, putting on your plastic suit. What the hell is it with those plastic suits anyways? Being like a, a hamster on a treadmill. Pumping iron. It doesn't seem to be working. You gotta see it here first. Here, in your head. And then it will happen here. That's how life works. If you don't have goals, you're gonna be going nowhere. You know what goals are? Goals are like the rudder on a ship. They help it go in a certain direction. Not to get all nautical on you, but sails are what powers that ship. The rudder is what directs that ship. What are the sails in your life? What is help giving you the momentum and the movement? What is the rudder? Let me present to you that it will be goals. They point you in the direction that you want to go in. A ship without a rudder, where does it go? 
Who knows, right? Wherever the wind might blow it. That's like life. One, two, five, ten, twenty years can fly by if you don't have goals. And you'll say to yourself, kind of like the David Burns on, how the hell did I get here? Don't be like that guy. If you edit everything you say and everything you do to make everyone else happy, then who are you? Who are you? If all you do is parrot what other people say. My manosphere, bro. One fella said the Daybreak show reminded him of the Pondering My Orb meme. I had no idea what that was, and I just googled Pondering My Orb. And there's a picture of a wizard with a hood on, with an orb in front of him. And like everything is dark, and the orb is like casting light on him. Kind of like how when I sit here early in the mornings at times. And the only light in the room is from the laptop. It's funny. And the picture does kind of remind me of when I had like the big beard and I was wearing a hood and all that. It's pretty funny. Anyone with a tenth of a brain cell knows that Biden couldn't get 80 million votes. Let's get real. Guy couldn't even fill up a moose club or a backyard barbecue. But he's the president. Folks, you've been punked. You have been punked. I haven't been punked because I've been saying it all along. Oh, scam. Dem. Ick. I hate being right. Well, next thing you know, he'll be vegan. Happens 100% of the time with certain older women who get remarried. Another one to add to the divorce pool. How many times do I see these women that are like over 50 go vegan? And then next thing you know, the husband is going vegan. Because he can't control his own eating. You're basically, you know what the vegan is? Starving yourself. That's pretty much what it is. A man needs meat. A man needs protein. Yeah, but you can get protein from beans. Shut up. Seriously, shut up. I get this every single day. You've watched you've watched this physique go from a chubby guy to a dude that's buff, thin, strong. I'm not taking my shirt off yet. Not yet. Still got some wrinkles and folds down the belly from the lost fat. But this body has been kicked into shape by two things. What I'm doing exercise-wise, and what I'm eating nutritionally. I'm giving my body what it needs naturally. And that's not salad, or pasta, or granola, or smoothies. Sorry, folks. Next thing you know, he'll be vegan. I've lost track. I've lost track of how many times I've seen this. Minimum once a day, someone says to me on social media, are you on TRT? Because they can't believe a guy in his almost mid-60s will have the body of a 30-year-old. No, I'm not on TRT. I never stuck a needle except insulin. Today is my needle day, now that I think about it. Thanks for reminding me, because I am getting off of that by June. with the help of the Lord and a little bit of effort on my part. But no, I'm not on TRT. When someone says, are you on TRT? I say, no, I'm on ribeye, period. Last night I had a burger. I had a cheeseburger the size of the plate. Literally, I took like, I don't know, it was maybe a pound of ground beef, smashed it down till it was like this big, put it in a pan, put cheese on it, and made a giant cheeseburger and just ate it with a few condiments and some spices and stuff. And that was my dinner. It was magnificent. It was so good. Really, really good. And ate it like a steak. No bun, no bread, nothing like that. It was magnificent. Yesterday morning, uh, meal number one, four eggs with some cheese. Romano cheese, locatelli, put on it magnificent drank uh, water all day yesterday my uh, uh, like when I get up in the morning I fill up a one liter bottle I'll show you I 
either fill up this right here or this. This one's already filled up. I put a little bit of peach flavoring in it, and I will put my creatine in it when I go to the gym. That's what I do. So, and I'm perfectly fine. I sleep well, walk well, never hungry. Plumbing is working fine. Do that and you'll be fine. You'll be fine. Get up in the morning, have a big glass of water. Big glass of water. Right away, a pint. When you wake up, have a pint of water. And then make your coffee. Ah, oh, that's good. And then don't have breakfast right away. Have it a little bit later. Call it meal number one. Do two meals a day. Don't do three. Don't eat because it's lunchtime or dinner time or breakfast time. Have meal number one, meal number two. Give it a couple months. The weight's going to fly off. you got to be working out. You're going to be fine. Socially, facial hair has only been an asset for me. Keep it on point, all my single and divorced bros out there, and you're never going to have any issues. If you haven't tapped out with women yet, yeah, many have. I haven't. But there's many guys that are like, shit, I'm done with women. Done. You know, I'm done trying to look good for women. Like, I'll say something like, well, you, you know, look good for the ladies or something like that. And someone will say, I'm done with ladies. Or you're doing everything for women. No, I'm not. I'm doing it for me. If women happen to be attracted to it, cool. But I don't do anything for women anymore. I don't. That's been years now. But that doesn't mean you have to be a dick about it. Do you, like, do you automatically get a dick trophy when you go big town? Like, here's your dick on a plaque. The di you get the dick plaque because you're a dick. You can actually still be a decent guy and not hate everything around you and put on the those lens that see a devil behind every door. So... Keep it on point. It doesn't, on point doesn't mean short and lined up. You could have a beard down to here, but just keep it neat. Don't make it look like there's like animals hiding in it, you know? Or pull a chicken wing out of it whenever you're hungry. Stop that. Keep it on point, my single divorce bros, and you will never have any issues if you haven't tapped out with women. A woman can come to many good conclusions when you are well-groomed. However, grooming rule number one is do it for you first. No exception. Why do I keep this looking in top shape? Is it to attract women? I do it for me because I like to look good. Why do I get like this kind of hair? This is a different kind of haircut, right? Remember I gave this to myself last week. I'm liking it. I'm liking this haircut. Why do I keep myself groomed and looking decent, skin clean? Why do I do it? I do it for me. For me. If other people like it, great. But I don't do it for others. I do it for me. For me, facial hair has only been an asset. It's never been held against me ever. When women say to me, I don't like beards. I'd rather, I'd rather see you with a goatee. I'd rather see me by myself than with you. Don't let anyone sway you in any weird direction. You want a beard? Have a beard. You want to shave your head bald? Shave your head bald. Do it for you. It's like when people say, I don't like you with a beard. My response used to be, well, I didn't grow it for you. Period. I love this from Will Spencer. Courage is the first virtue that makes all other virtues possible. From Aristotle, courageous men must swim against the tide of weakness. That's how they build the rest of their strengths. If you've ever seen, like, rings, there's the kind of, uh, let's say, like, engagement rings, which I'm not a huge fan of engagement rings, but a, plain, a solitaire ring with just one stone plainly set is beautiful as opposed to a ring that's all shitted up with all kinds of just all kinds of nonsense on it. There's something beautiful about a single, a single gem. 
And that's what virtue is. A virtuous man doesn't need all kinds of accessories. The virtue alone is the solitaire setting. All right, well, Spencer, that's pretty cool. He's doing a digital conference series that I'm going to be part of. The Renaissance of Men Edition 1, a full day event online. And I think it's like 50 bucks online. I should put a link for it. It's Ren of Men, R E N, Ren of Men.com forward slash conference. That's pretty cool. I've had facial hair since I was 15 years old. Patchy as hell, of course, trying to look older. Just look kind of sloppy, but that's the way it is. I've had every length, I've had every length, every style in almost 50 years of having facial hair. It takes a little confidence and a steady hand to create a nice looking beard, but you do get better every time that you do it. Usually a professional Zoom consult with me could help you out. I do offer them, and it's a, a 20 minute session for a hundred bucks, help you not make a lot of mistakes and pick the best beard style for yourself. But I can answer all hair and beard questions in a consult. So just shoot me a message and we can make that Zoom call. Needless to say, I know beards and hair better than any human being that I know. Remember the first time that you heard someone say that you can't spot reduce? Like, you know, you got a little extra weight here. You're like doing more sit-ups. And so much, you can't spot reduce. You have to lose weight, total body fat, and then this will start looking into shape. It's not like if you have like that belly, that like more crunches are going to help you. That was not the answer. For me, that was about 1985 or so. I'll never forget that. Spot reduce. You can spot build but you can't spot reduce. You want bigger arms, bigger shoulders, bigger chest. That can happen. But you want to take fat off of a certain area, you got to lose total body fat in order to do that. Tucker Carlson, been in the news a lot lately, hasn't he? I do not trust the man, and I would not advise you to trust him either. Don't forget, Fox News hates you. Like half the liberal idiots who watch this show will say something you know, when I'll, I'll make a comment about CNN or MSNBC or some liberal shitbag reporter. And they'll say, yeah, but I'm not like a Fox News junkie like you. I'm like, I'm not either. Are you kidding me? I hate all the news. You bunch of binary queers. Stop it. It's not this or that. It's not CNN or Fox. I hate all of them. I don't want a single person chirping in my ear from Fox News. Yeah, but he's the best. The best of what? All the turds? He's the least smelly turd on Fox News? Come on. Don't forget, Fox News hates you. They're not throwing you a bone. Here, we'll reward those conservative people by having Tucker on at 9 o'clock or whatever the hell he's on. He doesn't say a single thing without approval from his superior. From the management. You remember there was a time when actually you might have thought Sean Hannity was cool? See how they set you up for that? Originally, 20 years ago, there was a show called Hannity and Combs, the conservative guy and the liberal guy. And you kind of took sides, if you were like a conservative, you took sides with the conservative guy, thinking that those two were actually different. See what Fox News did? The single most manipulative psyop ever on television is Fox News. Case closed. Keep watching Tucker. Go ahead. I love this thing by Chris Rock. My grandmother said a broke man is like a broke hand. You can't do nothing with it. What kind of gangster shit is that? That was one of the funniest things I've ever heard. Well, it was International Women's Day this week. And I, I think this is like International Women's Month or something. Am I right? So in order to celebrate that, I posted a bunch of pictures of men in dresses. That made a few people angry. I retweeted Timothy Regal. I'm going to have him on the show. I was on his podcast a couple weeks ago. He has in quotes, I would die for my family. 
His response is, great, but would you lose weight for them? Quit porn for them. Lift weights for them. Read the Bible for them. Stop drinking for them. Give up video games for them. Get a better job for them. Go to church for them. Lead their mother for them. I would die for my family. <laughs> but would you do all those things? That was a great tweet. Here's a myth. Eating eggs causes high cholesterol. The fact is, eggs have almost no effect on your blood cholesterol. Eat all the eggs that you want, my bro. Eat all you want. One of the most perfect foods ever. I just saw a diesel-powered Kawasaki KLR, KLR650 made by the military. Imagine a diesel-powered motorcycle. How trippy is that? I would imagine it's not going to be a speed demon, but I think at the lower range, there's some serious power there. I am not pro-divorce, but if you already made the decision that you want out of the marriage, I can help you in a way that your lawyer or therapist can't. Five coaching, consulting sessions, just message me, gb at georgebruno.com, and we'll get those things going. It's not cheap, but neither is staying stuck or staying in a marriage that's eating you up. Remember, I said, date long, marry slow, divorce fast. You're pro-divorce. No, I'm not pro-divorce. I'm pro-divorce if you already decided that it's over. Save the man, not the marriage. When the man gets saved, the marriage might stand a chance. Keep that in mind. I have to give special mention to uh, Drew Bay and Jay Vincent for uh, some physical fitness training in the past three years. Uh, Jay Vincent has helped me in the past six years, Drew Bay, and I, I gave him a shout out on Twitter because I'm not in touch with these guys. I just like listen to what they have to say, and it makes sense. Uh, between P.D. Mangan, Dr. Sean Baker, Drew Bay, Jay Vincent, they helped me kind of dial in my workouts, not waste time and effort at the gym. In and out in 45 minutes. In and out in 45 minutes. It's fantastic. Who is near Conshohocken? Plymouth Meeting, King of Prussia, Collegeville. I want to do a live panel show with anywhere between five, four, five, six people, a live show. And I want to do it once a week. Do you live in those areas, male or female? If you do, it's even better if you have a product or a business that you want to promote because having you on the show live, I will be asking you at the end of the show, so tell the audience how they can find you, and then you give yourself a shout-out, give your business a shout-out, if you're a content creator, if you have a, a brick-and-mortar business, that kind of thing. So do you live anywhere between Conshohock and Collegeville? Shoot me a message, let me know, because I want to start a live panel show. Adam Lane Smith says, Would you be friends with a man who is currently cheating on his wife? This, this It's a good question, but some of the answers are, are just irritating. And this is one of the things that just irritates the shit out of me about Christians. No, I wouldn't. And it shouldn't be a poll. Blah, blah. Just like one thing after another. My answer was this. I look at it this way. I may be the only person he could talk to. So if he has decided that the marriage is over, I would encourage him to officially make moves to exit the marriage. Like, so if your friend was cheating on his wife, you would just stop being friends with him? Really? You must be one of those good friends, right? My friends can talk to me about anything because what gets said there stays there. That's the way it is. So yes, I would still talk to him. For all my dudes who might be thinking that they want to do live events, Ken MacArthur is the undisputed master of making millionaires and multimillionaires, creating verifiable, successful events, and is the most humble man I know. Nobody does it better than Ken. And he gives a six-step action plan for leveraging live events. 
I haven't yet decided if I'm going to his event. There's a whole bunch of events happening on that particular weekend. I believe it's the last weekend in April, and it's in Philly. And, man, there's a lot of stuff happening that weekend. I might end up going to that. I'll tell you about it next week. Just a quick reminder that you are not a magician or a miracle worker, and here's a graphic to prove it. Basically, it says you can't turn a hoe into a housewife. Many times I have, during my live broadcast, I'll say, let's just have a moment of silence for those that have tried to turn a hoe into a housewife. That stuff never works out. Never works out. Ask me how I know. I've been teaching men to live and not to die for a few decades now, even teaching the language of life. Your life will follow your words. If you say something like, I would just die without her. I wouldn't know what to do without her. Keep telling yourself that, my bro, and it will be true. Use words of life, not words of death. Teach yourself to live, not to die. If you keep saying, I don't know what I would do without her, if she splits, guess what? You won't know what to do without her. Be strong, my bro. You got this. And with that, finish your coffee. And I'll see you on the next Daybreak Show, your home of sanity, clarity, and reason.